Hey guys, welcome to 5 Minute Fix. Today it is all about loops in Houdini. Coming up, I'll be going through things like setting up a basic loop, different ways to loop and why, as well as some more advanced techniques to really get the most from your networks. So hang around to up your looping game. Loops in Houdini are an easy way to go through each piece of geometry or each piece of uh, any attribute really uh, and do something to them. So if you have a wall that's been fractured or a wall with a bunch of bricks and each brick you want to scale up by 10% in its origin but you don't want to worry about complicated uh, transfer matrices and all that kind of stuff, you can do loops to loop through each one of them and uh, do just that. First off I got this test rubber toy geometry which is uh, this blue little squid like floaty guy or whatever and uh, if you hit tab and you type in four so you've got a bunch of uh, different options here now essentially these are all the same node two nodes that are going to drop down you gotta go get your block begin and block end and everything in between here is going to be in your loop so you can imagine this is like a self-contained little thing that is going to show you what's going to be run every single time depending on, on what you set up okay uh, this one here I've got uh, for each connected piece which basically just does a connectivity node sets an attribute called class on primitives and then over here it loops over that attribute on the primitives merges them all together and runs by each piece. If I do this, nothing's going to happen. But what you can see here is if I middle click, there's a bunch of polygons and you go through each one and it might be a bit of a mission. So over here, you've got an attribute class and this class attribute is going to give you an integer value per piece of geometry you can see here. So each piece will get a unique ID essentially. Um, and then it uses that to loop through. So if I hit here, it loops through all of them and you get the result of the whole loop running over all of them. If you click uh, display just this one, it'll show you just the current one that you have here. You can also over here hit single pass and then you can tell it exactly which number of the ID that you want to loop through, which is quite handy when you know the specific ID of the one you want to work on. For example, using the example I used earlier, let's go and add a transform node and let's just do this, drop it down here, let's set our pivot to the center so now you can either type the centroid uh, expression or you can use a handy little tokens here called uh, CEX which will give you the centroid of the X component. Copy that, paste, CEY and CEZ. So now what this is going to do is going to give me the center of this piece of geometry here um, that's currently running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this down by 0 0.9 uniform uniformly then I'm going to loop through all of them and you can see that all of them have looped and scaled down on their own centroids nicely exactly the result that we were after cool over here I have the same geometry but I've set it up to be packed so I've just created some packed geometry here so here we have some packed fragments instead of uh, a bunch of raw polygons. It gives you this attribute here called name which you can set up here which is essentially an attribute on the points which is piece 0, piece 1, 2, however many pieces that you have. Um, this has a connectivity node inside I think over here. So, um, you can set various other things here but I'll do a tutorial on packed geometry in another lesson. Here I'm just promoting the name from points to primitives and I'll show you why that's happening in a second and then I'm looping over all of them here. So the same idea, um, it's going to give you the same loop here. Um, this is just a bit lighter and uh, we can even copy and paste this in here and it's going to give us the same result. Um, except that now we're working on packed geometry instead of um, raw geometry. Uh, this is going to modify your base transforms which is what controls where and how your geometry is located and how your geometry is rotated and scaled etc. Uh, whilst it's packed so you don't need to worry about that for now. So now I'll run through the other options in the loop. Drop down for each. No. Okay for each name. So on the top one right here you've got a method here and a block path. So this block path should always be pointed to this which is basically telling it where how to contain the loop. So this is your your essential output of this node. You can have a bunch of these inputs coming in and then one output and they all know that they need to go to this output and loop over that. So 
that's fine. And they're going to look at that at this node at the bottom here, and then they say, oh, okay, I'm looping over this attribute with these values and everything. So on here, we've got iteration method, and we've got a couple of different ones. So uh, auto detect from input is going to automatically detect what kind of input you're giving in and try and loop through everything based on the other things that you've got here. By pieces or points is going to see what kind of information you're getting it, giving it. So uh, are you giving it points? Are you giving it a, a bunch of polygons? Are you giving it a bunch of volumes or whatever? And it's going to try and loop through those chunks of things. So whole chunks of polygons, whole chunks of points. Okay, based on attributes that you set here. By count is a little different. Now what's this going to do? It's just going to loop a certain number of times. So here you can say, I want to do this loop 10 times. I want to start at one and I want to go by one. So you can do this and it'll only do the loop five times because it's going to do 10 iterations divided by two, which is five. This is a nice way to do things like uh, smoothing. So let's get a pig's head here, throw this down and throw this smooth. Okay, so the smooth doesn't really work. Well, let's figure out why. Um, so if you go here on the top node, the method here is set to fetch each piece or point, which is not what we want. What we actually want is the input for this. So what we want to do is we want to get the geometry. We want to run the operation and then get to the geometry as it was again and run it again and again and again as many times as our iteration is set. So let's get our geometry. We're going to apply a smooth here of, let's do one, Okay, and we're going to run this 20 times. So what we're going to do is fetch feedback is going to get the result here, pipe it to the top, and then run this again, and pipe it to the top and run it again as many times as we say. So here we've got one iteration of smooth, so you can see that happening here, one iteration of smooth, and then it comes out, let's do another, let's do 10, let's do 100, Okay, and over here we can set our smooth function to scale dominant or whatever. So there you go. So now you know by count you can set this to 100 and uh, it will do this operation 100 times. Okay, so uh, lastly I'm going to show you something that's called the meta import node. And what that's going to do is it's going to give you uh, information about this loop. On the top node here, the begin block node, let's go meta import node. Okay, and now what you get is this extra node here. It's also a block begin, okay? It's linked to the same one as that one is, except this is set to fetch meta. Okay, now what fetch meta does is it gives you detail attributes with of these things that are happening in the loop. Let's actually do this with a rubber toy and let's set this to path and let's set connectivity. Okay, we're gonna grab a connectivity. I'm gonna get a class here and then we're gonna go and write a little script to give us a cool name. Uh, so we'll call this name and say s at name equals sprint f percentage s underscore percentage d chunk. Let's give it chunk and then we're going to give it the class attribute. Okay, class attribute here. So it's going to give you a string attribute called name based off the class and it's going to give you chunk. It's just going to take this value, pipe it in here, and it's going to take whatever this is and pipe it in there with an underscore in the middle, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so that's how I just built my name there. So now I'm going to loop over name, attribute delete. Okay, I'm going to delete the, where are you, material. Okay, so now I've got uh, this looping over, it's going to loop over 10 times, and, and I've got this meta input node. Now why do I, why do I care? What am I, how long am I going to do with this? So what I can do is I'm going to take point value, let's do a point value, okay, and I'm going to pipe it in here, okay. So now I'm going to do, make, I'm going to change the color based on the amount of loops. So I'm going to write in here, you can see We've got iteration, which is none, number of iterations, which is the total amount of iterations, the current iteration, and the current value that we've gone over. Now, because we wrote, we're looping over name, it's, this is going to be the value of the current name. And the iteration is we are on the ninth iteration inside here, and the number of iterations is the total number of iterations over here. Okay, so piece nine total iterations. Let's get the detail attribute. So we're going to say we want it, iteration is the detail attribute from input one. I'm going to call this iteration. So we can get that and then we're going to get a float uh, value. Yeah. 
it's going to be a random value of iteration. It's going to be from 0 to 1, which is what we want. And then uh, let's just put a little seed here, multiplied by some seed. CD is equal to set value, value, value. So this is going to set the color for each one to a random number. Okay. So let's see what we get. So you can see here it's gray. And that's because when all your colors are on the same level, so 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 in RGB, you're going to get a gray value. So what we need to do is randomize all three of these. Okay, so let's do, let's make this X, and copy this, paste, 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 and we'll just change the seed quick. Okay, and then this random value, we're going to say that's Y and that's Z. So that's R, G, B. R, G, B. Okay, there, now you can see what's happening. So it's going to loop over each one, assign a random color to it, and that's going to be that. So that's how you can leverage this looping to change various things in a wrangle, or even uh, you can run scripts, or add attributes, or offset things, or whatever you really want to do. Um, I've used this, this looping style quite often. Hope you enjoyed this video, like it if you liked it, and don't forget to subscribe for more content. See you next time.